Welcome back. It's been a bit of a hiatus for me taking the summer off, living and working in Minnesota, getting things together. But here I am back on the road uh, in Bend, Oregon. It's been a beautiful weekend, just wrapping up. And I have a neighbor that I'm really happy to have you meet, who the only place I see him is in Oregon. And he's right across the way here, the incomparable Richard. Rick Harrington from Oregon City, Oregon. And uh, if you know Rick's work or know Rick's uh, personality, you won't forget him. Very memorable. I'm going to be walking around the display with him, so you're going to get to see some of his pieces that are just always so fun to take in. But here's the man himself. Oh. Look at that. Howdy. Good to, good to be your neighbor, Rick. Always and look forward to it. Yeah, it's it's great. I mean, this is the only time I ever see you. I have to come all the way to Oregon. Well, one of the things I love about this show is we always end up with fun neighbors. That's right, and we make the most of it. We've we've uh, got our hops fill. Yeah, the weekend. well, well, not yet. We're getting there. We are getting there. Um, these iconic barns uh, are just incredible. And but but before we look at too much of the work. Did you come from a previous career, or or did you go to art school and get right on it? Um, I went to school for business. I nearly had a stroke in an interview at IBM. Just not a stroke, a panic attack. <laughs> and uh, realized I didn't want to be in business. And I didn't know what to do. I went back to a really fine business school for art. Um, so I got probably the art education that somebody that didn't know you could make a living painting needed to get me kind of going down the path. Sure. Um, eventually I went to a little graphic arts trade school and I worked in advertising first as a comp artist which is a out-of-date term um, and then as an art director for about four and a half years and right about age 30 I decided I wanted to spend more time with my kids and I became a freelance illustrator and I did that up until 24 years ago next Tuesday Darby and I got married. Not that you're keeping track. Well, it's easy to oh, keep the, track. Oh, the marriage part. Yes. Yeah, so got 24 it. years, I, you, don't, you don't keep track? I'm telling. <laughs> I, um, 39 so, years just two weeks ago. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So 24 years ago next Tuesday, we said I do in the internet launch and my illustration business turned out, disappeared. Just kapoof. Um, yeah. I used to make $65,000 a year and take about 12 weeks a year off. And wow. it was gone overnight. Wow. The upside is I didn't realize that I didn't actually like illustrating. Um, so it took me a little while to kind of get my feet underneath me and find out that you could actually sell paintings. And uh, by the time I was 39 or 40, I was painting full time. Wow. Um, so I've been doing that since. And now that you're like 45. Yeah. You're, yeah. You're Five kinda, years in. Kind of getting the hang Five of it. Five years in, yeah. Oh. I did have a guy tell me this weekend, he thought I was only 50. So I'm feeling pretty... You know, spring chicken-ish. Well, I was, yeah, we were just having this conversation yesterday uh, that I used to tell people I was 10 years younger than I would, just, you know, trying to solicit compliments, and then we stopped getting a rise out of them. You, you realize that, that game was yeah, over. Yeah, that, that game was, yeah, that ship had sailed. Uh, let's walk over to the Red Rhino. Love right. Red Rhino. All right. I mean, because... Uh, Am the I animals, supposed to stay in front or stay No, 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 no. Okay. You just stay close to me so that I can hear you. Uh, the animals, as I recall... They're, they're a little more on the newer end of what oh, you're doing. Oh, yeah, the last right? 18, 20 months. I've, just, I've been trying to figure out how to paint animals, so I was happy with them for 20 years, and I'm inclined to render too much. Yeah. And uh, I've been working on a body of abstract work, and in, in doing that, I kind of found my way to the animals. Um, so it's, it's all new. It's the same idea I've been trying to explore, more um, the animal that lives in your head rather yeah. than the animal you see. Oh, cool. And speaking of animals, it's it's in, in a way, it's almost surprising. Maybe you try to separate your two lives, but I know that you don't try to separate your two lives. Of it's just one your life. Your two passions of fishing and painting. Yeah. Uh, because you really approach both of them in very similar fashions, and yet I've never seen any fish in your subject matter. Um, well, first off, right now, there's uh, like every guy and their dog that fishes is painting fish. So I'm not sure there's a need for more fishing imagery, but I've started doing some woodcuts and I'm actually planning to do some woodcuts of fish. Well, that'll be cool. Just for fun. That'll um, be cool. One of the things I'm interested in is um, the effects of what's going on in the environment and ecosystems on 
the species that live in them. That's part of what's going on with the rhino and all the gold leaf on it. Um, but with fish, historically in the Columbia River, Chinook salmon ran 50 to 80 pounds, of occasionally over 100. Um, and right now, Chinook salmon run maybe 15 pounds. So there's reasons for that uh, based on what we've done to the environment. And that's something I want to explore some printmaking. All right. Well, that, that, that'll be interesting to see. Um, oh, look, you have customers. Maybe future customers. The show's not the show's not over yet, so I'm hogging I'm hogging Rick's time. Uh, I was going to say something more about the fishing. Oh, I know what it was. You uh, plug your podcast. Oh, great! <laughs> the plug river, your podcast. The riverrambler.com. Um, if you love to steal that fish with a fly rod, more often than not, in the least effective way possible, skating, which my friends Todd Hirano and Adrian Cortez. We'll try to convince you it is not the least effective way. They're killers with a skated fly. But uh, you can find it at theriverrambler.com. Um, there's nine episodes up so far, and we're rolling. Cool. I'm gonna, you know that I'm going to be listening to it across the country now. Probably for 10 minutes or so, and you're right. you'll say, yeah. oh, wait, I forgot. Yeah, I and then I remember, geez, I remember how bad I am at fishing. So even though I live on the, the glorious Outer Tail River, I, I don't wet my line very often. Speaking of wetting our lines... Uh, can you, do you have anything to wet our whistle before we wrap I, this up? I do. Being that we're in uh, hops country. I'm, I'm kind of surprised you didn't question whether or not I did. Well, I did. It was really a sort of a rhetorical question. All right. Okay. Let's, let's pop these. Don't spray my painting. Oh, gosh. <laughs> How embarrassing. Okay, Rick. Oh, God oh. dang it. Look, look at that. Here's to you. Cheers, buddy. What do we got? A good uh, Portland beer, right? Yeah, this is Portland beer okay. from Hub Brewery. It's uh, Gears Up IPA, baby. It's great being your neighbor. Same here. Love you, bud. Love, love seeing you guys. Love hanging out with you for the weekend. See ya. Take care.